Hello, welcome to our restorative flow tonight. It's good to see you here, Leanne. Okay, so as far as props go for our class tonight, I'm going to have a, a couple of blocks handy. If you have a stool or a chair nearby, that probably will be fine. Um, and you can use some cushions, folded blankets. I've also got a hand towel here. I just grabbed a towel from my kitchen. So, and this will be helpful feedback for us as we um, really work on the proprioception or just understanding where our vertebrae are in space. So it's just a feedback mechanism, but it will be helpful. So if you can just go grab a hand towel or a washcloth, something for us to use. Um, just we'll lay on this and you'll see, I'll, I'll explain that. Let's see what else. Also, if you have tennis balls or something, I've got these rubber massage balls but if you don't have any kind of a ball that's totally fine i am going to be just giving you the option to use your fists as well so those are the things that we're going to use tonight as we practice and we're right at 7 30. So we'll go ahead and get started um, we'll actually start laying on our backs, but I'm just going to talk just briefly. And tonight's focus really is going to be more on our awareness and being in our bodies. Um, so the most, some of the newest research about lower back pain um, teaches us that, you know, the the neuroreceptors that give information and feed this information up our spinal column to our brain kind of compete for bandwidth, especially our proprioception neuroreceptors. So your proprioception is your ability to feel where you are in space, right? And you have these um, receptors all throughout your body, okay? But especially the fascia in your lower back, the lumbar thoracic fascia is really thick and dense with a whole bunch of nerve endings. And there's a lot of proprioception receptors down there that like to know where they are in space. Also, there's nociceptors and nociception is pain signals. Okay. And your proprioception and your nociception signals actually compete for bandwidth in your, in your up your spinal column to tell your brain what's happening there in your lower back. And those nerve channels really like to have information. They are hungry for information. They want information and love it when there's a whole bunch of proprioception or movement-based places in space information going from those the, your low back, all that dense fascia there up to your brain. And fascia is just like all the connective tissue, okay? But when there is 
not very much movement and spatial information going on, then those nerves need something to do. And so there can be some pain. Those nociceptors just turn on and um, use up the traffic space so that there's something happening on, on that pathway to your brain. And this is really good news for us because often with lower back pain, I mean, there are anatomical things that can go wrong. You can have slipped discs. You can have um, other, you can, you can have arthritis. There are things that can cause pain, but often with chronic back pain, you can do MRIs and tests and really find nothing wrong. But this also does help when you don't have things wrong slip discs or um, arthritis or other things wrong. When we just give, especially that lower back fascia, that connective tissue that's really dense and um, you know it's connecting the web, it's like a big web connecting all of those muscles back there together when we give that a whole bunch of proprioceptory information and it crowds out pain information and it teaches our body that we have access to being able to move that place so anyway i hope that makes sense it wasn't wasn't too heady there but that's what we're going to work on we're going to work on the awareness in our spine and really deepening our awareness of what we're doing and how we're moving there and just noticing how that affects our whole nervous system and how, how we feel in our body. So go ahead and um, lay down on the floor on your mat with your knees bent, feet about mat distance apart and you can let your knees knock together or you can keep your knees um, as wide as your feet. If you have tennis balls or some kind of rubber balls, um, lacrosse balls are really hard, but they work, or tennis, you know, I've got these rubber massage balls, you can use these, or um, you can use fists. But we're gonna bring some pressure into just three spots on our lower back. And it doesn't need to be so precise. So we'll start with balls or fists just right underneath your rib cage. We'll just lay there, okay? And, and, and then after a little bit, we'll move down kind of to the middle of our low back, and then we'll move to just right above our pelvis, okay? So go ahead and lay down. You can use your balls or your fists. I'll do my first spot with just my fists. So right on your lower back, so you're not on your ribs at all. But find those ropey muscles either side of your spine. So your fists will be about an inch apart from each other and let your knuckles just really kind of settle into those ropey muscles on either side of your spine. And just let yourself breathe and check in with your body. You don't need to have um, intense pressure there yet. Let your knees knock together, let your knees stay hip distance apart. Breathe in and out of your nose. See if you can kind of slow your breath down, maybe a count of four as you inhale. And then five or six as you exhale. And inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale. And exhale. Take one more slow, 
grounding breath just to kind of bring yourself into your body and just feel the sensation of your knuckles or your balls there in your lower back. And then see if you can intentionally really push your lower back in to your fists or your balls underneath you. And then you can kind of release from the pushing. And see if you can really just push down that place that's right on top of your fists or your balls. And then release. And you can just link that to your breath. So as you exhale, really let yourself press down. Feel the sensation of the pressure into the muscular tissue on either side of your spine. And then see if you can really just hold down the pressure for maybe a full round of breath or two full rounds of breath. And then release the pressure, just leave the balls there. And let yourself settle. And then we'll switch places. So just sneak your fists down a little bit if you need to kind of wiggle your fingers out first, you can. Um, but just let your knuckles be about an inch apart. So either side of your spine, just a little bit further down your back. And we'll do that same thing, just push down and then release. And you can connect that with your breath. Maybe as you exhale, push your lower back into your knuckles, and then you can release that pressure. So this kind of work you know, often we think, oh, I'm not really doing a whole lot. But this is the kind of work that really gives big dividends. By connecting our brain to parts of our body that may, we may have either ignored or that may need attention may need a different kind of information and feedback given to our brains. All right, this next time you push down, just kind of hold the pressure, any amount. You can really push down hard, or you can just go to, you know, until you get some gentle sensation. You get to choose. And you might notice it's a little different on the right side to the left side. Just kind of, you know, Note that. And then take the pressure off. You need to, if you're using your fists, you can take your hands out. Wiggle down. So I'll use my balls for the last place. So same distance apart, just either side of your spine on those ropey muscles, but just right above your pelvis, so at the very lowest part of your lower back, but not on your pelvis. Okay, so either two little balls or your fists again, and just having your knuckles digging into those um, ropey muscles, your erectors on either side. And you'll just push with an exhale and then release the pressure. So not any big movement and let your knees just be a comfortable distance apart.
Let's just take two or three more breaths there. Let that pressure and release kind of pulsation. And then let yourself just hold the pressure. And then release that and just remove your balls or your fists out from underneath you and just let yourself come all the way down onto your mat. And just close your eyes and let yourself feel your body. Just notice that lower back area. Feel how alive it feels with that pressure and sensation that we just turned on there. Kind of notice, bring some awareness to that area of your body. We're just waking that up. Mine feels kind of warm and tingly. If your knees are knocking together, let them come, um, you know, hip distance apart. I'm just going to do some pelvic rocks here. So pretty subtle movement, just moving our pelvis. So really tip your tailbone toward the floor and lift up your lower back, increase the space underneath your lower back and then really push your lower back space into the floor and lift your tailbone up. And you can move pretty slowly here. So we're, see if you can think about just moving that lumbar spine, your lower back spine, one vertebrae at a time. Not lifting up very high, but the next time you find that forward tilt, that anterior tilt. See if you can push your tailbone down and then lift the vertebrae just above your sacrum and then work your way up toward your rib cage. And then from the bottom of your rib cage, see if you can lower down and tip your, your tailbone up. So pretty subtle and small movement. Just exaggerating the space under your lower back and then really pushing your lower back into the floor. So you may not even see that I'm doing anything here, especially because I've got the microphone pack there. You're just moving your pelvis. Let's just do one more round of that movement. If you didn't hear me earlier, I'm going to take a hand towel. You know, this is just a towel from my kitchen and I've got it folded long way. So if you don't have one, just go run and grab something, a hand towel. And we're going to take, take it and lay on it in those same three areas on our back. And I just want you to have something that you can feel the texture. So if you have a yoga strap, you can even use that also and fold it a couple of times so that it's got some thickness to it. It's just a tactile thing because we're working on that proprioception on all those nerve endings feeling where they are in space okay so either a folded um dish towel hand towel or a strap and we're going to start with it in that high low back so right below your rib cage so it's not on any of those vertebrae underneath in your rib cage but just right below your rib cage and you're just gonna lay on that and you just see if you can feel all the texture of it right it's not super thick and if you want it to be a little thicker you can fold it a little bit more 
so that you've got something that you can feel there, okay? And then we're just gonna settle. So you've got your long strip underneath that top part of your lower back. It's not rocket science or super specific, just somewhere in that upper low back, okay? And we're gonna do something similar to what we did with the balls. So I want you to just see if you can notice what vertebrae is on your little strip underneath you. Okay. And see if you can push that vertebrae down into your towel or strap. And then just release that pressure. And see if you can just push just that vertebrae. And then see if you can release that pressure. Now, if this is hard, if you feel like you can't just move just that one vertebrae, do this in your mind, right? I often, you know, I like to say like your imagination is the most useful yoga prop. And just keep practicing. Imagine in your mind just a vision that you've got one vertebrae pushing down into the towel underneath you and then lifting up. And you can connect it to your breath. Okay, so let's do one more where we're just pushing it down. And then pause, just let go, just kind of feel neutral like you're just laying here. Find that place where you feel the tactile information of the towel underneath you. And I want you just to take that one vertebrae and see if you can lift it up off the towel and then let it rest back down. And same thing, you're just gonna kind of, that one little spot, lift it up and down. Just tiny release of load on that towel and then let it come back down. Let's just do one more of that lift and lower. And then move your towel down, just kind of to the middle of your lower back. Okay. It doesn't have to be anywhere perfect, but just another place on your lower back. And then just settle, kind of lay, so you can feel the sensation of having that towel underneath you. And now see if the, that vertebrae that's touching the towel, if you can push it down into the towel and then lift it up. And just think about that you're moving just that one or two vertebrae that are on the towel. Lift it up. Lower it. And then just kind of release the pressure. Push it down. And release. So it may not look like you're doing anything, but you'll feel what muscles turn on to support that spine moving. And the movement might not even be perceptible. It might all just be internal. And it may all just be in your imagination. It's fine. But let yourself feel the tactile information of that towel underneath. Let's do one more push that vertebrae right into the towel and then release. And then we'll reverse. I want you to think about just lifting just that vertebrae right up off the towel and then relaxing that effort. So you don't need to push down when you relax, just kind of relax. Lift it off and then relax. Lift it off. Tiny, tiny movements, but think of just isolating just that one vertebrae that's on the towel. 
And then we'll go ahead and move to one last spot. So go down to the lowest part of your lower back before you get to your pelvis. So it's not on your pelvis, it's still in your lower back, but down as low as you can go. Okay. We're just gonna do the same thing okay, that with your brain. See if you can feel that one vertebrae and push down into your towel and then release the pressure and push down. So our goal here is just to increase our awareness. Just to increase our capacity to voluntarily move our lower back vertebrae. And often, what happens is if we have a lot of that nociception, that pain signaling happening, our brain just thinks, oh, I shouldn't move that place. I shouldn't move it. I need to protect it and keep it safe, <clears throat> right? But the, really the thing that would solve the, the pain signaling would be actually movement. But then we lose access to the movement. Okay, let's switch and lift. So lift that little vertebrae off and then just relax. So you can lift it. Just that space that's on top of your towel, your tiny strip of folded towel. Just lift and then let it come down. Lift. Let's do one last, just lifting that one vertebrae, let it come down, and then move your towel out from underneath you and just relax here without any extra props for feedback underneath your lower back. Just kind of notice how it feels. Let your knees come apart if they've been together. Let your feet be parallel. And now we're gonna move in a bridge pose and really think about moving sequentially here. So I want you to push those lower back vertebrae down so that you can lift just your tailbone and then your sacrum, the back of your pelvis. We're gonna go super, super slow, slower than you've probably ever gone before in a bridge pose. I want you to lift the next vertebrae just above your pelvis. And then see if you can just lift just the next one. And then lift just the next one. And then just the next one. And then just the next one. And then just the next one. Okay, so we're going that slow. It's almost one breath per vertebrae. And just the next one. And we're not gonna go super high, maybe just tell your shoulder blades. And then we'll go down one vertebrae at a time. Let's see if you can just almost one breath per vertebrae and just notice what ones you feel like you can move one vertebrae at a time and what parts feel like that just all wants to move in one piece. Notice what muscles you need to turn on to be able to bring those lower back vertebrae down and then pause. Okay, now you can go just a little bit faster if you want, but I want you to go sequentially in a really slow wave. So push your lumbar spine down, lift your tailbone, 
And you can slowly lift those lower back vertebrae to your mid back. Maybe come up a little bit higher this time. And then see if you can just ripple down, start from the top and work your way down. And now just keep going there at your own pace. If you want to go a little bit faster, you can. I keep turning my head to the side to look at you, but see if you can just go one vertebrae at a time. I'm, I'm watching actually play my extra kids on the house. Go up and down. Let's just do one more. One last time. Slowly, slowly, slowly lift. Sequentially, see if you could do just one vertebrae at a time. And just notice if it got easier as you moved a little bit more. And let your hands rest on your belly or just to their sides and just pause. Let your feet go as wide as your mat. And I'll just windshield wiper, but just keep the back of your pelvis on the floor. Sort of more rocking your pelvis from side to side. And then pause. We're going to do one more thing laying down. So I want you to take your hand's towel. We're going to roll it with a shorter way so it'll be thicker. I'm just going to take this. You can sit up if you need to. I'm just going to do it like that. Just roll it so you've got a thicker roll now. Okay. And you have two options of how to do this next one. I'm gonna do it laying on the floor and just put that roll right under my lower back. So it's the shape of your lower back. You can also do this against the wall. I have a chair rail against my, on my wall, so it's not super flat. But if you had a flat wall, you could come up against the wall and put this roll there and, and just let yourself let the pelvis come to the wall and your upper back come to the wall and you just have that space okay, under your lower back. So either way, um, and you may actually get more awareness doing it standing up, but it just doesn't work for me with my walls. So it's going to kind of be like a crunch what we're going to do, but we're just going to lift our thoracic spine now. So we've got the support under our lower back. Okay, so we can just keep that natural lower back curve. You can bring your hands behind your head so that you're lifting the weight of your head with your hands. Okay, you're not craning your neck. And we're just going to lift one vertebrae at a time, but we're only going to lift to the bottom of our rib cage. So you can curl your neck up and then try to lift your upper vertebrae until you come about to your shoulder blades. And then see if you can one vertebrae at a time, roll yourself down. And just keep moving here. So exhale as you curl up. Let's just do one last one there. Or you're curling down if you're at the wall, right? All right, and this move the thing out from underneath you. And then we're gonna roll over onto our bellies. And find some access to that same place in a sphinx pose. So elbows underneath your shoulders or maybe a little bit forward. 
Okay. And then just tuck your chin and just round your upper back. So you're going to see if you can do it one vertebra at a time. Lift those ribs up off the floor. And then let yourself unfurl. Lift your head and look forward. And just move with a few breaths here. Let's do one last one there. So we think about rounding that upper spine. And then we'll pause, just make a pillow for your forehead with your stacked hands. And just let yourself kind of pause and feel the length of your spine here. Just bring your awareness there and just notice if you can access that with just your awareness, just feeling where it is in space, feeling it from the inside out, knowing that you do have a spine there. And then look forward. Come back up onto our forearms and you can have your hands clasped and then come up onto your knees just Scoot your knees in. So we're kind of in a table, but with forearms and knees on the floor instead of hands and knees. Okay. And you can let your head hang. You can even bring your head to the floor, but not really with any weight in your head, or just let your head hang. Okay. But we're just going to find some of that pelvic rocking here. So without the information of the mat underneath you, really lift your sitting bones and completely relax your belly. And then tuck your tailbone under and see if you can curl that lower back. And then completely relax your belly as you lift your sitting bones. And then you can round that lower spine. Let's just do one more there. We're really isolating this movement just in the lower back. Using that pelvic rocking and having our forearms on the floor to isolate that. And then you can come up onto your hands. Now, this is a place where if you have a block or um, two, or a chair or a stool. We're just gonna come into a low lunge, stepping your right foot forward outside of your blocks, okay? Or your hands can be on the floor if you don't have any props. But you know, I want this to be pretty easy, whatever you're doing, okay? So you can bend into that knee, find your low lunge and a comfortable distance for your feet from each other. And then just find kind of that cat and cow motion in your lower back here. So tucking your pelvis under and then sending your sitting bones back. And see if you can just let those belly muscles reflexively do what they need to to facilitate this motion. But just kind of feeling how those vertebrae moving are connected to the rest of your body, the rest of your lower body, your pelvis and your legs. Let's do one more motion there. And then we'll just switch sides. And take your left foot forward into a low lunge. And let yourself be up high enough that it just feels really easy. 
for you. Okay. So, I mean, you could have hands at your hips, but a little bit of leaning forward. So even if you put your hands on like a chair, the seat of a chair, and then find that cat and cow motion here. And notice how you can completely let go of your belly and then just let those deep muscles do what they need to do to move your pelvis and your lumbar spine as you tuck under. Let's just do one more breath there. One more movement. Stick your bum back. Tuck that tailbone under. And release. Take your knees as wide as your mat and let your big toes touch and let your hips come towards your heels and come into a child's pose. And let this be like a fold that feels good for you. So you can use your block to rest your head on. You could stack hands. Maybe reach your arms out, forehead to the floor. And just breathe into that low back space. Just notice the kind of sensation that's happening there. Maybe stretching. Let your belly expand with your breath. And you can stay here in a child's pose or you can rock forward, plant your hands shoulder distance apart and lift up and back into a downward facing dog. Just feel the length of your spine and you can even play with some um, undulation of your spine here in a downward facing dog shape. Tucking your pelvis under and really rounding through that lower back and then sending your sitting bones up toward the ceiling and letting your belly kind of just hang and drape. So, Either one, you can be in your child's pose just breathing or you can come up into a downward facing dog. And then we'll bring our knees to the floor and come to a cross-legged seat. I want you to sit on something that can help you sit tall. So I'm actually gonna sit on a block because that's what I've got here, a folded blanket. Hello, um, whatever you have available. I'm going to start with my left shin in front, my cross leg. So, whether you've got like your feet under your calves or you like to have heel to heel, and then just bring your arms straight out in front of you and just hold your hands together. I'm going to twist over to the left. And then pause and then see if you can just twist maybe a little more, but you're going to keep your pelvis totally stable and steady. So your pelvis is not moving at all. Maybe you can twist just a little more. Maybe just a tad more. And then release. Come back to center, just kind of check in with how your back feels. And we'll do the other side, reach your arms straight forward and then we'll twist over to your right. Actually, before you do that, switch the cross of your legs. Let's switch the cross and then twist. Just notice if it's different from one side to the other.
And then maybe see if you can twist just a little more, but keeping your pelvis just as it is and your pelvis upright. And maybe just a little more. Don't hold your breath, let your breath just come natural. In and out your nose. And then release. Just kind of close your eyes and just check in with how your spine feels. So it's all really small and subtle, but it's these fine tuned movements that really help our nervous system safely connect to all those little muscles that help control our vertebrae and that kind of can nourish all of that um, connective tissue back there that has so many nerve endings that feed our brain so much information about where we are in space. And we just want to hook our brain up to all of it. And it does lose those connections over time without use or even with um, trauma to those tissues. All right, if you've got a block, I'm gonna come down off my block. And if you're sitting on something, if you're sitting on a folded blanket, it's probably fine. Just bring your knees out in front of you and we'll just windshield wiper those knees from side to side. And now you can let your pelvis twist and rock. Just go back and forth a couple of times. And then we'll find that 90, 90 over to the left, to my left. Doesn't really, I mean, you can do your right. It doesn't matter which way. And then just let yourself twist over that left shin. Then maybe you fold all the way to let your forearms come to the floor. It doesn't need to be an intense um, fold, but just breathe into your lower back. One more breath in and out of your nose. Just go to the other side. Just let your knees come up and over to the other side. And you can twist over that right shin. Maybe you fold and just bring your forearms to the floor. And just breathe in and out of your nose. So you can have, just sit um, in Sukhasana, easy seat, easy cross-legged seat, or you could um, cross and stack your right knee on top of your left. So you're more in a Tomukhasana legs. Either way, either one, shin in front or knee on top. And if there's some space here between your knees, that's totally fine too. I'm gonna use my block because I have it, but you can just use a hand on the floor and we're just going to do a side bend. And then you can kind of support your head with your left arm. If you've got a block, you can bring an elbow to your block. We've done a lot of kind of flexion and extension of our spine here. And here we're just going to do a little bit of side bending. And we've done a little bit of twisting. You must enjoy your breath. You can even close your eyes.
Just take one more breath there. Come on up. And we'll just switch sides. Just lean back. Switch the cross of your legs. So either other shin in front or other knee on top. If you've got a block, you can use it or just bring your other hand to the floor. Find your side bend. You can rest your head in your hand there and bend your elbow as much as feels good. Or you can bring your elbow to your block and just use that hand to support your head also. Just enjoy this opening in your hip, the freedom in your spine, the length through your rib cage. Just one more breath here. And then release. Come on up, lean back. And we'll take our legs wide for a few breaths. So if you have a chair or even a couch, a folding chair would be nice, or an ottoman that you can kind of straddle that would be nice. I'm going to take my blocks and stack them. But find a place just to rest your forehead. So let yourself fold here and find some support. And some freedom from your, for your lower back. And just breathe awareness into your lower back and see if you can just feel where it is in space. You can bring your awareness to your tailbone and just feel where your tailbone is in space. And even if you don't have anything to rest on, you could just bring a forehead to your palm. Feel the sacrum, the back of your pelvis, the base of your spine. So you can just bring your awareness to where your sacrum is in space. Okay, and really inhabit, like let your awareness emanate from that place. And just sequentially, just bring your awareness. See if you can feel your lowest vertebrae. Let's see if we can just feel the next one up. And the next one. And you're just directing your energy, you're directing your awareness, you're directing your breath to that place. And just creating this map in your brain. You already have a map of your whole body and where everything is. But sometimes there's parts of that map that maybe have been smudged or you know have an ink blotch on them where we're just our brain can't really voluntarily access that place. And so we're just cleaning up the map and rewriting the map with our awareness. As you just go one vertebrae at a time and just see if you can be aware that it's there. Relax your shoulders and your face and your jaw. And just one breath at a time, just see if you can move your awareness up your spine.
all the way up, maybe it's your upper back. Bring your awareness to your neck. And to your skull. And then just push yourself back up to a seat. And then grab the backs of your legs, and we'll make our way down onto our back for our final Shavasana. If you'd like to lay with your feet up a wall or feet on a couch or, you know, knees bent, legs on a chair, feel free to do that. Wherever you are, just let yourself settle. And even if your legs are up, okay, I just want to find a little bit of rocking on your sacrum. So if you're laying on your back, just going to find a little bit of movement. Our knees side to side, knees bent, feet on the floor. And you can do this if you're, you can have your knees bent, feet on the wall or to start with. And just kind of rock a little bit. So you'll you'll keep your whole pelvis on the floor, but just rocking from side to side. Not big full windshield wiper twists. Just really small and subtle. And then whether your feet are on the wall or your feet are on the floor, just creep them a little bit further away from you. And just keep that rocking going. And then creep them a little bit further. And keep your rocking going. And then a little bit further. And just keep creeping about a footprint in a time. And just keep the rocking going until your legs come either straight up the wall or about if you've got your knees bent, legs on a chair, you just kind of can come. And you can find a little bit of rocking there even with your legs straight. And then let that rocking end. Bring your hands to your face. You can use your palms and your eyes just to close out the light for a minute. Give yourself a little massage in your jaw. And then you can really pull down on your earlobes. Maybe open your mouth as wide as it'll go. And then let go of that effort, just do that a couple of times. And then totally just let go of effort, let your hands go to the sides of your body. And again, bring your awareness to your spine, just feel the whole length of it. Supported on the floor underneath you. Just notice the sensation, your ability to access it. And then just let go of the effort. Let your mind rest. Let yourself breathe and just ride the wave of your breath and completely let go. Your breath might get really shallow and soft. Just let it come in and out of your nose with a relaxed jaw. And the open throat. Heavy eyes, relaxed forehead. 
Relax shoulders. Just feel free to stay here for as long as you have time to stay here. Every breath, letting your body relax a little more. We need to stick to our 60 minutes. And a little bend in your knees. Bring your feet to the floor. Reach your arms overhead. Just roll to your favorite side. You can take a breath in a fetal position. And then push your way up to the cross legged seat. And find that inner smile. Reverence for your body, gratitude for your awareness that can direct itself to all the parts of your body. And that as you gain more awareness, you gain more agency. Just notice how it feels to have a spine. Thank you so much for practicing with me. The divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Namaste. Thank you, friends.